I recently came across this problem right here from the International Maths Olympiad and I want to show you my solution to it. The IMO is a yearly competition for the brightest high school math students on the planet. It's split over two days and students have four and a half hours each day to solve three problems. So nine hours and six problems in total. This is question one from the 2019 version of the competition. So we're given this equation which describes the relationship the function has with itself and its composition. So we have f of 2a plus 2f of b equals ff of a plus b, with that ff being the composition of f with itself. This function is defined as mapping integers to integers, so it can only take integers as the inputs, and it will only produce integers as its outputs. So let's see what happens if we let a be 0 and b be x plus 1. Quick note, x can be any integer, so we'll stick these in the relationship we've been given and simplify all the expressions inside the brackets, which gives us another relationship that describes the behaviour of f. Let's now do a similar thing with a being 1 and b being x. This gives us another relationship for f. The reason we chose these values for a and b was so that a plus b is the same in both cases. This in turn makes that composition, the part on the right hand side, the same in both relationships. So now we're able to set the two left hand sides equal to each other. We'll rearrange this so that all the parts with x are on one side and anything without an x is on the other side. Now look at the right hand side here, the part without the x's. f of 2 and f of 0 are both constants, i.e. they don't change. So when we find the difference between them and then divide by 2, that is also a constant. This is really important because it tells us the left hand side is also a constant. And what does the left hand side represent? Well it's f evaluated at consecutive integers. So what we've discovered is that the relationship between the outputs of the function for two consecutive integers is always the same. So let's plot this on a graph. Here we'll look at the consecutive integers p and p plus 1, and we can see the difference between outputs marked here in orange. Now if we look at the next integer, p plus 2, the gap between this and the previous integer, p plus 1, has to also be given by this orange line, i.e. it's the same as the difference before, this shows us then that the relationship we have must be linear, i.e. f of x is equal to mx plus c, where m is that difference that we've been talking about. Now then, we're able to use this knowledge to rewrite the original relationship. Let's expand all these brackets and start comparing the coefficients. So looking at the coefficients of a, we get an equation for m, namely that 2m is equal to m squared which we can solve to give us that either m equals 0 or m equals 2. So now we have two different cases to investigate further. Firstly, when m equals 0, pretty much all the terms will cancel out, just given 0. And this leaves us with only 3c equals c. So when is this true? Well, if a number is equal to 3 times itself, the only number that works is 0. So c must be 0. And now when we look at m equals 2, we get that 3c equals 2c plus c which we can simplify to 3c equals 3c, which is true for any number. Remember though that we're limited to integers, so we can say that this is true for any integer, i.e. c can be any integer we want it to be. So now we're able to write our two solutions. On the left, we get that f of x must be 0, i.e. the trivial solution. And on the right, we get that f of x equals 2x plus c, with c being any integer we like. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If there's a certain problem you want me to have a look at, please let me know below.